Every day, around 2.4 billion cups of coffee is consumed worldwide. To meet this high demand, millions of people harvest tons of coffee beans. But how are 175,000 jars of coffee produced every day? Let's visit the Nescafe factory to discover how one of the most popular beverages in the world is made. Coffee is the second most consumed beverage in the world after water. It is believed to have been discovered by a shepherd who noticed that his goats became more active after eating certain beans. Coffee has been cultivated for over 1,000 years and is now produced in more than 60 countries around the world. The history of Nescafe dates back to the early 20th century when Swiss chemist Max Morgenthaler began working on a way to produce soluble coffee. In 1930, Nestle acquired the rights to Morgenthaler's patent and began producing and marketing soluble coffee under the Nescafe brand. The company invested heavily in advertising and promotion, and Nescafe quickly became a leading brand in the coffee market. During World War II, Nescafe became a staple for the U.S. troops and the Allied forces as it was easy to transport and prepare in the battlefield. After the war, Nescafe became a popular product worldwide, and Nestle continued to innovate in the production and packaging of soluble coffee. The flavor of coffee depends on the region where it is cultivated and the roasting and blending methods used by the producers. Brazil is the largest coffee producer in the world, accounting for over 35% of coffee production. Coffee grows in the form of flowers, and nine months later, the buds become grape-sized berries. Coffee is harvested from the coffee plants once it is fully ripe, which can be identified by its intense red color. From flowering to harvest, it usually takes between six and nine months. Harvesters collect the ripe berries while leaving the green ones to ripen further. They return to collect the berries from the same plant as they mature. Harvesters try to ensure that there are no more than two green berries for every 100 leaves they collect. The harvested berries are collected in sacks and loaded into trucks. Each sack contains about two kilograms of coffee beans, enough to prepare around 200 cups. Harvesting coffee by hand is an exhausting job, so some coffee plantations have turned to machines like the five meter tall harvester shown, which can do the work of a hundred people. As it moves along a row of trees, the machine vibrates rods inside it to shake the berries from the branches. The fresher the berry, the better its flavor. The berries collected in the morning are stored in a wet mill, ready for processing in the afternoon. In the wet mill, water channels wash the berries and drop them into a screw auger, which loads them into a deep pulper to separate the outer skin and fruit. A rotating drum presses the berries against the wall of the deep pulper, squeezing out the beans. From the deep pulper, the beans travel through water channels to two enormous rotating cylinders, where they are sieved to separate them from the green hard berries that have passed through the deep pulper. The beans are then bathed in more water to extract a thick, sugary substance. Next, they are spread out on a cement patio to dry for four days, with workers raking the beans to dry them in the sun. Once dried, the beans go through a huller, which separates the husk from the bean. The dried beans are then sorted by weight into three categories on an oscillating table. The beans in each category are poured into bags, each weighing exactly 69 kilograms before they are sent to coffee processing plants. The bags are sewn shut and stacked for shipment. But how are these coffee beans turned into one of the world's most popular beverages? Every year, 35 million tons of freshly harvested fruits arrive at plants like this one, one of the largest soluble coffee plants in the world. This is the Nescafe factory, where 890 people work, producing soluble coffee. Every day, 170 tons of coffee beans are delivered from South America to this instant coffee factory. Up to 560 tons are stored in this enormous silo. Each day, 1,200 sacks of raw materials enter this plant. The process begins with sampling, which involves poking each bag to obtain a coffee sample. The Nescafe factory uses two types of coffee, the Arabica variety and the Robusta. The Arabica species produces a fine and aromatic coffee, while the Robusta is known for its strong body and intense flavor. Once the batch is approved, it enters the production line. The coffee passes through a sieve that removes any larger residues that the bag may contain. In the cleaning area, the beans go through a machine with different sieves that eliminate impurities and make the final selection. Once cleaned, they are sent to silos identified by variety and type, specifically for the production process of soluble coffee. Next is the roasting phase. The beans are placed in a roaster to develop their aroma, color, and flavor. The beans are roasted at 210 degrees Celsius. By heating the beans to 210 degrees for 12 minutes, 
the starches they contain turn into sugars, and the aromatic compounds that give coffee its flavor are released. The roasting process also begins to burn off the caffeine. The longer the roasting time, the more caffeine is lost. The beans are constantly stirred to ensure even roasting without burning. The roasted beans then enter an industrial mill where they are ground into coarse powder. The roasted and ground beans are transported to this section of the plant, where they are mixed with hot water in a process known as extraction. When the hot water comes into contact with the coffee, it extracts its flavors, aromas, and properties. The coffee is heated until it condenses into an extract that is spread on a conveyor belt, taking it to the next station, the freezing room. Every hour, 30,000 liters of coffee travel through the heated pipes of the tower. Heated to 70 degrees Celsius, the water evaporates and is extracted through the siphon. To remove the water, the freeze-drying method can be used. The coffee infusion is frozen at about minus 50 degrees Celsius, causing a thin surface to form that can then be broken into pieces and subjected to a vacuum. It is a process characterized by its ability to preserve the flavor of the coffee. Workers have to wear thermal clothing to protect themselves from the Arctic temperatures of minus 50 degrees Celsius. As the liquid coffee advances along the conveyor belt, it receives a blast of cold air, solidifying into an 8 millimeter thick sheet of frozen coffee. The granules then exit the freezer in shallow trays, each containing 15 kilograms, enough for 75 jars. They are directed into a sluice and introduced into a gigantic vacuum chamber, where all the air has been removed. The granules then enter the drying chamber. The dryer is heated, melting the ice in the granules. However, in the vacuum, the ice turns immediately into gas without passing through a liquid phase. This process is called sublimation. Once the water is removed, the coffee powder reaches the filling machine. Hundreds of glass jars are introduced into a conveyor belt and filled in less than a second. This machine fills 280 jars per minute, taking more than 11 hours to fill today's batch of 175,000 jars. The coffee is vacuum packed to preserve its quality for 24 months. Labels are placed on the jars and they are wrapped in groups of six. From the factory, Nescafe jars arrive at supermarket shelves. If you enjoyed learning about the coffee making process, give this video a thumbs up and let us know in the comments what you find most fascinating about coffee. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more exciting content like this and click on the video on the screen and watch the amazing process of how gold is extracted from Earth. Thank you for watching.